بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد احبتي في الله continue on with our study of sharh as sunnah lil imam al muzni rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatan wasi'a and we reached the section of the treaties where Imam al Muzni uh, is speaking about Iman and the importance of Iman or what Iman is to Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Uh, and this, of course, you'll find in many of the treatises of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah in that they explain these points of ittiqad of what Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah believes which differs from the groups of bid'ah or the sects of bid'ah uh, and in the case of or the issue of Iman this primarily the two prime sects that disagree with Ahl Sunnah are the Khawarij and the Murjia. And the Khawarij, they believe in making takfir of the Muslims for the major sins. So for example, the one who drinks alcohol to the original Khawarij, they would say that that person is a kafir, they have disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have left the fold of Islam. Uh, and that is because they have done something which goes uh, uh, against Iman. And for them, Iman is either full 100% or non-existent. The Murjia, on the other hand, also believe that Iman is either full or non-existent, but for them, deeds do not harm they have no effect or they're outside of what is defined as Iman. So, for example, the Murjia would say about the one who drinks alcohol, or better yet, the one who even does uh, actions uh, that take them out of the fold of Islam, they would say that this individual, uh, what is important only is what's in their heart, and what's on their tongue or the statement of their tongue. As long as they claim they're a believer, they're still a believer. So for them, sins do not harm faith at all because actions are outside of Iman to them, outside of what is defined as Iman. So you see the similarity with the Khawarij in that Iman is either totally existent so for them, any, uh, uh, a Muslim is either a 100% full believer or, they're, uh, or uh, they're not a Muslim. That's, that's it. There's no in-between. There's no nux iman. There's no person with deficient iman. You're either a full believer, halas, you're a Muslim, you're a full believer, or you are uh, a non-Muslim. You're outside of the fold of Islam. And the Khawarij also believe in that same, uh, those same two poles. However, the Khawarij make takfir of the believers for the major sins, and the Murjia believe that the major sinner is not harming their iman at all. And Ahl Sunnah is wasad, is in the middle of those two beliefs, and the asl of those two beliefs. And Ahl Sunnah believes that iman is comprises of three components as we're going to study and those three components are al bilisan the statement of the tongue wa amal bijawarih and actions of the limbs uh, and al qul o al a'mal al qulub or a'mal al qalb or actions or belief uh, in the heart. So Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah holds the belief, and this is from uh, deduced from the and codified 
by the Salaf, this is deduced from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it was codified by the Salaf al-Salih beginning with the Sahaba al Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in so moving to the treaties Imam al-Muzni rahmatullah he said well Iman he began and Iman and then so he begins to define what Iman is to Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah because this Sharh Sunnah this book Sharh Sunnah is uh, a description of what the Mu'min should believe and what comprises the belief of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah and makes them and distinguishes them diff, uh, making them differ from Ahlul Bid'ah so he says, Well, Iman, Olum, Wa Amalum, Mal Ittaqadihi Bil Janan, Wa Kul Bil Lisan, Wa Amalum Bil Jawarih, Wa Al Arkan, Wa Huma Sayani, Wa Nidamani, Wa Karinani, La Nufarraku Baina Huma, La Iman Bila Amalin, Wa La Amala Illa Bil Iman. إلا بإيمان والمؤمنون في الإيمان يتفاضلون وبصالع مال هم متزايدون ولا يخرجون بالذنوب من الإيمان ولا يكفرون بركوب كبيرة ولا عسيان ولا ولا نجيب Li Muhsin Musinihim Al Jinani Al Jinana Badamin Ojabalahu A Nabiyu Salahu Alehi Wasallam Wala Nashadu Ala Musi Musihim Binar. So Imam Al Muzani Rahmatullah he said regarding Iman, he said, and faith, Iman. And Iman is a statement, an action, along with belief in the heart, statement with the tongue and deeds with the limbs, and the pillars, meaning the pillars of Iman. And they, the statement and the action, are two congruent equals, meaning you must have a uh, 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 the statement on the tongue and you must have action you can't have Iman in, in, in Islam Iman is not just in the heart the heart is the most important aspect of Iman but you need statement and actions as well they all make up Iman they're all three parts of Iman the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned uh, when he said and he was referring to the importance of uh, Iman and the, and the importance of the heart when he said inna fi jizid mubgatin idha salaha salaha jizid kullu wa idha fasida fasida jizid kullu ala wa hiya qalb the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that verily in the body is a morsel of flesh and if it is healthy the whole body is healthy. And if it is sick, the whole body is sick. Verily, it's the heart. Ruahu uh, Muslim. This is collected in Sahih Muslim. And so it shows us that the asal of Iman is in the heart. And we're not saying that those other, uh, the statements of the tongue and the actions are not a part of the asal of Iman. They all make up Iman. It's just the heart is the most important. But that differs with other belief systems. For example, the people, uh, Ahle Kitab, the Jews and the Christians, and many, uh, many other communities. They believe that Iman, for them, faith is just a matter of the heart. For them, in general, it's just a matter of the heart only. You know, you don't know what I believe. I can be doing all the most evilest things, but it's my heart. Okay? I can say anything, I can do anything, but ultimately it's my heart. 
That's it. Whereas Ahl Sunnah specifically and the Muslims in general believe that Iman is comprised of those three components. Uh, with that being said, as we mentioned, the Khawarij, the Murjia, and all the and many of the other sects that they deviated in this Bab of Iman, and we'll talk about just some of them, uh, but we will not go into lengthy details uh, regarding those issues. But we will suffice ourselves with the belief of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and some of the adilla, some of the evidences to support their belief regarding Iman. And so, Imam al Muzni, he said, they are linked together, we do not differentiate between them. Meaning that these uh, components of Iman, they are linked together and we don't distinguish between them. He said, there is no Iman without action, and there is no action except with Iman. So he emphasized the importance of action because. Uh, Regarding actions, you have, of course, the murjia believing that actions are not a part of iman. Or, and by doing actions, it doesn't affect your iman. It doesn't, uh, and they have various beliefs with, within the murjia ittiqad. There's very variations, but in general, they believe that iman, uh, that actions are not a part of iman. And the believers fluctuate in terms of Iman and they increase their Iman with righteous deeds. This is the Aqid of Ahl Sunnah. And they are not expelled from Iman due to sins and they are not declared disbelievers due to the perpetration uh, of a major sin, nor disobedience. And we do not make paradise incumbent for those who perform good deeds, except for those whom the Prophet ﷺ declared would be in paradise, and we do not testify that those who commit evil deeds will be in the fire. So you can see the second ibarah, or the second statement of uh, Imam al muzni is in fact a rud or a refutation of the Khawarij. Whereas the first ibarah, the first part, when he was talking about, and he said there's no Iman without action, and there's no action except with Iman, here he is actually refuting the murjia. And the second part, he, he's actually discussing, uh, you know, around the issue of takfir, that he said, and they are not expelled from iman, meaning the, the believers, uh, due to sins, they are, uh, and they are not declared disbelievers due to the perpetration of a major sin. So here, this is a refutation of the khawarij, because the khawarij make takfir, of the believers regarding uh, major sins. That is the biggest uh, aspect, uh, the biggest point regarding their creed and their methodology in approaching Iman and, an appro and their Medheb. And this belief that they have is what unites the Khawarij sects throughout time, even those modern day contemporary Takfiri groups, that they have, they may not share exactly fully this point, but they will make, uh, they focus their attention uh, basically upon making Takfiri of the rulers, making Takfiri of other believers who don't believe like they do or who go against them. And those are also Sifat or characteristics of the original Khawarij. Imam Ahmed al-Najmi, rahmatin wasiya, he stated regarding the statements of Imam al-Muzni, he said, Aqul, he says, I say, Ta'rif al-Iman, the definition of Iman. He says, Al-Iman i'tiqad bil-qalb, wal-nutq bil-lisan, wa'amal bi-jawarih, yazid bi-ta'a, wa yanqus bil-isyan. He says that Iman, faith, it is belief in the heart, and it is statements of the tongue, and it is deeds or actions of the limbs. Yuzid bi ta'a, you know, it in, uh, Iman, it increases with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it decreases with disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, for example, when a person does something, uh, a good deed, they read the Quran, this 
is a good action you're rewarded for, and it increases your Iman. Especially if you have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you're doing this action, uh, you're doing this action to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the reward of Allah to Barak wa ta'ala. Also, speaking about Islam and giving da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or doing an act of charity, or sharing something with someone, or assisting someone with something or a difficulty that they may have. All of these are good deeds. And those good deeds increase your Iman. On the other hand, sinfulness decreases Iman. So the one who uh, does drinks, the al drinks alcohol, as we mentioned prior to this, or they smoke weed or whatever the case may be, they're doing a sinful action. This is sinful in Islam. And what that means is then, then in turn, their iman is low. Their iman is low and it decreases. Yunqus bimasia. It decreases with sinfulness. So when a person is doing that act, that act, or they have a boyfriend or the girlfriend, or they commit zina, whatever the case may be, akramakum Allah, or they harm someone, they speak ill about someone, they're backbiting, they're carrying uh, tales of namima, you know, spreading lies or evil throughout the community, they are harming someone physically, they're oppressing someone. All of these are sins, and all of these decrease your iman. And you can see with sinfulness, you can see the cycle uh, that it creates a cycle. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Rana ala kulubihim, that they have a covering over their heart for what they used to do. So this covering, and as the Prophet wasallam explained in the authentic hadith, that with sins, your heart begins to, it, it starts, every time you commit a sin, there's a black dot on your heart. And as you continue with sins, your heart begins to get covered. And this is the rana, rana ala kulubihim. This is the covering of the heart. And so the more you sin, the more your heart begins, uh, you know, uh, is covered. And as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentioned, he said, al-ma'asi barid al-kufr. He said that uh, sinfulness is a means to disbelief. Sinfulness is a means to disbelief. And I can give you a, 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 an example. For example, the one who begins, uh, and I've used this example prior to this, uh, about pornography, for example, or, you know, uh, doing pornography, like, that they are watching the Muharramat, and they're gaining sin, and their heart, you know, is being covered. The more they watch and involve themselves in this activity, the more sin they get, the more covering of the heart, and at the same time, they may be affected even in their itikad, even in their belief, because they may begin to think, this isn't such a bad sin. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not doing zina. But usually the person who is deeply involved in that, it moves to uh, zina. It moves to fornication or other deviant behaviors, which are even worse than that. Akramakum Allah, Wallahu Musta'an. And so you can see it's a spiraling of sin. Now with that spiraling of sin, as I mentioned, it begins, it can begin to affect a person's creed to where they belittle the sin. Then after some time, if they've done this for years or whatever the case may be, they're covering their heart and they are beginning to legitimize the sin or they may begin to legitimize the sin. So this is very important to distinguish this point. I want to uh, point this out, that a person may do this sin to where they think it, it, they begin to believe this sin is permissible for them. When they make it istihlal, what they, the ulama mentioned, if they make it permissible, then this becomes disbelief. Because now, so then now they can actually leave the fold of Islam just because of pornography just because of zina or just because of alcohol. Why? It isn't that sin itself, but it's because they begin to believe the sin is halal. They begin to say, well, you know, alcohol's okay for me. I'm not hurting anybody. I can drink. 
pornography is okay for me. I'm not hurting anybody. It's halal. Once they get to that point, this is disbelief. So you see how the sinfulness, it leads to kufr. Now, a point I want to mention with this that we see with some of the modern day takfiris is that what they say when they claim and attack uh, the Muslim governments like in Saudi Arabia or Saudi Arabia is first on their hit list, but Saudi Arabia is the most adherent uh, to the Sharia uh, you know, as a, as a total government and as a, as a governing authority. They, I, I don't know any other place on the earth which is to the extent and promoting and propagating the creed of Ahl Sunnah Tibu Jama'ah and you find it in their institutions. So they, the Tekfiris, the modern day Khawarij, they target Saudi Arabia, for example, and they say, hey, you guys, Saudi Arabia is, uh, you know, have, they have banks that do uh, riba, you know, that they have um, the sin of, of interest or usury. Or, and that the government gives permission to this, you know, because the banks can't operate without the government doing this. And the government takes loans from these kind of institutions uh, internationally and internally. So the Tekfiris say, well, now they're legitimizing it. They are making it lawful because they are allowing this, or they allow music, or they allow cigarettes, or they allow whatever. But this is a big false misconception and inference of the Tekfiris. Because it isn't that the government, uh, the government has the power to stop it. Of course, they can stop those things. They cannot allow those things to take place. So that is a sin for those who are allowing that. But like the person as an individual who is uh, allowing sins to take place in their household or they are doing sins, unless until it gets to the extent of where they believe it to be lawful, then it is just a sin. It's just a sin, whether it be a major or a minor sin. But it is not, it does not take them out of the fold of Islam. So I hope the point is clear, and this distinguishes Ahl Sunnah from Ahl Bid'ah, and especially Ahl Bid'ah from the Khawarij. Then uh, Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi he mentioned some of the ayat in the Quran which substantiate and illustrate or they are evidence for this point that the believer's iman increases because as we mentioned there are uh, many sects in Islam that don't believe that iman actually increases. You know, or they either believe that Iman is not, um, the actions are not a part of Iman, or they believe uh, some variation of that, where actions, as was known about, uh, and there's a lot of controversy about Imam Abu Hanifa, that he, Rahmatullah Rahmatul Wasiya, a great Imam from Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah, one of the earliest, out of the Fuqaha Al Arba, he was the first. And he was a tabi'i. He met a uh, 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 sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala. However, in the issue of iman, there's a lot of controversy uh, regarding his statements about iman. And without going into depth on this issue, that he believed that iman it had uh, that it wasn't exact that it was a part of uh, kamal kamal al iman that it was a part of making one's iman more perfect, but yet that it wasn't exactly from the asl of iman. This is in a nutshell. Now there's much many books have been researched and controversy about this and. Some of the, uh, or many of the scholars, they refer to Imam Abu Hanifa and, and uh, his main students and those who followed uh, that madhab, if you will, they refer to them as the Murjia, Murjia to Fuqaha. The uh, scholars of jurisprudence 
that had some uh, irja. They had some uh, a mistake regarding iman, and so this is a very controversial issue. And it just goes to show you what we can learn and benefit from that as a lesson, and why we should be careful about calling making tabdi of someone quickly is we see that even imams of Ahlul Sunnah throughout time, that there are many great imams that contributed to Islam and supported the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, but they may have made a mistake in an important issue of Aqidah even. As we've talked about in other lessons about the great imam, Imam an and we read from his books and we study his books and benefit but none of the scholars of Ahl sunnah make tibdi of him, call him an innovator. Rather, they say that he was affected by his environment and had Ashari creed with regards to the divine sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and probably in some other issues too. And the same goes with Imam Ibn Hajar al-Askanani, the explainer of Fath al-Bari, you know, the, the most important explanation of, uh, of uh, al-Bukhari. And he's also the author of Bulugh al-Maram, or the compiler of Bulugh al-Maram, and many other books. You know, he's an imam of Ahl sunnah But there were some issues, especially regarding the divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where they made ta'wil. They had mistakes in that area which does not, not negate their fadl. It doesn't negate the fact that they are imams of the sunnah, but we don't follow them in their mistakes, and their mistakes must be pointed out. But we maintain their righteous status amongst Ahl sunnah because this is what the imams of the sunnah did. It goes back to a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said, Kullu ibn Adam khatta wa khayra khatayina tawabun, that all the children of Adam make sins or make mistakes. And the best of those who sin or make mistakes are those who repent. So that's a, a, a point which is a little bit outside of, uh, of, of, of what we're talking about here, but it's something which is important because we want to give you a good um, understanding of some of these masail, some of these issues of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, and so that people are not hasty in speaking without knowledge about the imams of the Sunnah and belittling them. So as we were mentioning, uh, Imam Ahmed al-Najmi, he mentions, of course, the components of Iman here, and then he begins to mention some adillah from the Qur'an. Uh, for example, the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, in which he says, لِيَزْدَادُوا إِمَانًا مَا الْإِمَانِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, في سورة الفاتح, uh, verse 4, he says, to in order to increase their iman with their already existing iman. And this is about the believers. This is in regards to the believers. And the shahid, or the point of mentioning this verse, is to show it as an evidence to show that iman increases. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the believers that uh, their iman increases, that their iman will increase along with their existing iman. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَيَزْدَادَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِيمَانًا وَلَا يَرْتَابَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mudathir, verse 31, He tabarak wa ta'ala says, وَيَزْدَادَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا and incre uh, to and increasing those who believe in what iman in their iman and so that they do not have doubt so that the people uh, who are given the book meaning ahl kitab do not have doubt and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says will mu'minu and the believers Letting us know, what? What is the purpose of mentioning this verse here? Why did Imam Ahmed al-Najmi mention this verse of the Qur'an here? To show us evidence that Iman increases. And the Shahid, 
ويزداد الذين آمنوا إيمانا and to uh, increase those who believe in faith so faith increases it, it's not stagnant it fluctuates and Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم فأما الذين آمنوا فزادتهم إيمانا وهم يستبشرون Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Tawbah verse 124 he mentions فأما الذين آمنوا as for those who believe then their iman you mean their faith is increased وهم يستبشرون and they you know are, are become happy receiving the glad tidings so it shows us that ahli iman their iman fluctuates that people's iman fluctuates that it sometimes it's high sometimes it's low this is the aqeed of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah and this is what the the book of allah and the sunnah the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh shows us and ahl sunnati wal jama'ah with the correct uh view uh you know they are united in the view that uh iman is comprised of those three components and that iman increases that iman increases with uh obedience and it decreases with sinfulness as for the murjia some of them they believe that iman or faith is just acknowledging uh you know acknowledging in the heart that Allah exists and you know in in the 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 pillars of faith and so on and so forth that it's just it's just acknowledgement and they are known as uh for example the group the murjia to jahamiya and also from the murjia there are those who say that iman is believing in the heart and it is also a uh, statements of the tongue so by taking the shahada or saying that you're a believer as well acknowledging you're a believer on your tongue and having this belief in your heart that that is sufficient without doing deeds without uh you know ha having any deeds that deeds are are great deeds are okay you know they're nice and you want to do good deeds this is what a believer should do but it's not what makes them a iman so that means for them the murjia and the most extreme manifestations they believe a person as long as they say the shahada maybe they don't pray uh you know if it's a woman she wears makeup and she wears no hijab wears pants uh things like this and they'll say statements like uh you know I'm a muslim and you don't know what's in my heart you're right we don't know exactly what's in your heart but one of the principles of ahlus sunnah is ahlus sunnah yahkum ala dhahir the ahlus sunnah they judge by what is apparent so on the outside we see somebody who doesn't adhere to the tenets of uh you know don't does not illustrate any of the tenets of faith or any of those things which are required of them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open disobedience to Allah then we say that they're dis uh, a disobedient person is what we believe because this is what is apparent and if we see someone who their apparent appearance is that they are a sunni on the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they're striving to adhere we see them as a you know a person they're doing obedient they're praying they're doing the acts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded of them then we judge them because we don't know their heart we judge them by their their apparent uh what we what it seems apparent to us so as we mention the murjia that some of them so the ones that are extreme in this they will do no actions 
no deeds of, of Islam. They, for them, there are many people who believe that Islam is actually a, a, uh, a culture, cultural experience, and that it's actually a race. Some people believe that. They believe because they're Arab and they were born into a Muslim family, that that's sufficient, that they are the best of believers. And that, in fact, if you become Muslim and you're not Arab and you're not like them, that you're, in fact, not really a Muslim. There are people who believe they're so deceived by their, uh, their cultural prejudices and sometimes racism and foolishness that they do not, they don't have any uh, Islamic tools to judge by. So then, of course, they're going to judge based on falsehood and batil. They're not going to judge based on Islam. And for them, their Islam is just their culture. You know, I was born in Pakistan. I know more than you. That's it. But they may be practicing. They may not practice anything. They just, they do sh sh uh, say the Shahada. They like to fast Ramadan sometimes, maybe. They don't pray ever, maybe. Uh, they like to keep the Quran in their car perhaps as a decoration or in their house for some, you know, as a, maybe even like an amulet and things like this, but no actions of Islam. So this shows you the danger and that this uh, can actually be, be a disbelief. So it's a very dangerous practice to be misled about these issues uh, regarding Iman. And as we mentioned, the Ahlul Sunnah, they believe the people of Iman, they have different levels. And one hadith which shows us that Iman, uh, that it has different uh, levels, that there's different levels of faith, is the hadith of uh, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala who said, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَقُولُ من راء منكم منكر فليغيره بيد فإن لم يستع uh, This is a hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri رضي الله تعالى عنه عن أبي سعيد al-Khudri رضي الله تعالى عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم يقول من راء منكم منكر فليغيره بيد فإن لم يستطع فبلسانه فإن لم يستطع فبقلبه وذلك عرف الإيمان رواه مسلم It's a hadith in Sahih Muslim in which uh, Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala and he said, I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Man ra'a minkum munkarin fali ghayruhu biyad. Whoever sees uh, something sinful, then they should change it with their hand. And if they're unable to, to do so, then they should change it with their tongue, meaning speak out against it. And if they're unable to do so, then they should change it with their heart, and that is the weakest form of iman. What's the shahid here? What's the point of mentioning this hadith? Because the Prophet وسلم, at the end he said, and that is the weakest form of faith, meaning that faith has different levels. And commanding the good and forbidding the evil is a part of Iman. And that there are different levels of it, as the Prophet وسلم, illustrated in the hadith. Whoever sees an evil, change it with his hand. Letting us know that that's the first level. That's the strongest level. If you see someone, he's drinking alcohol, and you have the ability, you know, this is a, a Muslim, for example, and you see your brother Muslim drinking alcohol. They know it's haram. You know it's haram. And you have the ability. Maybe it's your younger brother. Maybe it's your child, whatever the case may be, or someone in your household, someone you have authority over, and it's not going to cause a greater harm by doing that then maybe you can do it physically. Son, give me that bottle, and you bust it. You throw it in the garbage, okay? Because you're the father. You have the power and the authority to do that. So that is the strongest of faith. Then the second uh, level, the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, and if you're unable to do that, then speak about it. Letting us know that sometimes you're unable to do that. If it's someone else, another Muslim brother who maybe they're bigger than you, Maybe it's going to cause a great fight. Maybe it's going to, you know, it's going to cause some greater harm. 
then you don't do that. But maybe you can just advise them. Brother, you know, sister, you shouldn't do that. You know, it's 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 not permissible. Sister, you should wear a, a, a hijab of some sort. Wear a khimar. Sister, it's not permissible to wear perfume and makeup out in public. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward you for your good. May Allah guide you, guide us in you and forgive us in you. I just wanted to give you advice as your brother. So maybe you come to her with this Islamic advice and that is changing with the, the tongue. So that's the second level. And the Prophet ﷺ said, And if you're unable to do that, maybe you're unable to do that. Maybe the person, maybe it will still cause a big harm that this is a, a sister who's very uh, heated and maybe she'll act crazy in public and start cursing and yelling and fighting. What's your? It's not your business, whatever the case may be. So the next level of Iman, letting us know that Iman has levels, the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is the weakest form, so that lets us know that Iman can be strong, Iman can be weak. He said that it, uh, it is uh, hating it in the heart. So by disliking that sin in the heart, gosh, I hate that the brother shaves his beard. I hate that the brother is, he smokes weed. I know he, he I hate that the brother listens to music. I hate that sister so-and-so she, you know, she wears makeup outside. Uh, I hate that sister so-and-so has a boyfriend. All of these things, that's a part of Iman that you dislike the fact that your Muslim brother or sister is sinning. Even if you're unable to uh, uh, physically change that or speak out against it, but you dislike it in your heart. And the Prophet ﷺ still described all of those things as Iman, as faith. And that's the Shahid. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And there are so many evidences in the Quran and the Sunnah that talk about this issue of Iman. And there are so many books that are written by the Salaf that discuss Iman that I believe this will suffice us as a... Uh, with regards to the text that we're studying without getting into many intricate details regarding Iman, but this gives us the ittiqad, the general belief of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, which was the point of Imam al Muzani in this uh, short portion of the treaties. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala Nabiya Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.